Well, hello everyone. In today's video, we are looking at uh, wiring diagram for uh, for my system here. Um, what we try, what I'm trying to show, what I didn't show last time is is how did I wire this. So I'm going to start with this diagram over here, and then we will move between the diagram and the par uh, and the system itself, and we will go back and forth and talk about the stuff that I did. Okay. So first off, let's start with the different wire sizes that I used to wire up a system. So here are the wire sizes. Um, the first one and the smallest one for wiring the system in is a 10 gauge. The 10 gauge goes between the inverters and the panel, uh, the panel that goes from inverters to the house's main panel. Okay, the next one is 8 gauge, which goes which supplies the power from a from a grid panel to the inverters. The next cable is is two gauge cable that goes from the grid supply to the grid panel, and it also goes from the from the inverter panel to uh, from the inverter panel to the home panel. And then we got we got the uh, uh, one out windy nation battery cable that goes that goes from power walls to the power combiner box power combiner distribution box and from power distribution box to the inverters themselves okay these are only four wire sizes that I used while wiring in the system disclaimer not an electrician but I did read a lot about National Electric Code. Watched a bunch of YouTube videos. There's a guy that it's also teaching the um, uh, some kind of a NEC classes, and he's got good series uh, um, of uh, NEC code and whatnot. So right here, wire chart that I use to determine what wire gauges I'm going to use. Uh, this is only a sample because I also use the conduits and there's a, there's a, a calculations for how many current carrying uh, uh, how many current carrying cables you got inside a um, uh, conduit or raceway or wire raceway or whatnot. So you got to take that into consideration together with temperature. Everything matches. For power correction factors that they use, read the NEC code, uh, you will get yourself familiarized. Okay? Now, let's go to the next step of the video in a little bit more of a detail uh, as to how was this wired in. Um, hopefully, this has helped you a little bit in regards to wire sizes. So here is mock-up of my system, kind of a wiring diagram. Uh, color coding is right here. Uh, red is a positive DC run. Blue is negative DC run. Uh, green one is inverse inverter AC output. And the yellow one is grid AC input. Okay, so right here is a supply line from the grid it's marked yellow and this is the two gauge wire THHN I got it from the Home Depot two gauge running down to this grid panel that supplies the inverters uh, inside this grid panel are four I mean three 40 amp breakers each controlling one of the inverters, inverter supplies. Okay, now if you're asking about the grid panel, it's a Eaton BR125 amp, eight space, 16 circuit, indoor main lug load center with a surface door. That's the exact name off of the Home Depot website. Number two panel, 
is the same. It's an inverter panel. I call it a home panel because it supplies the home panel from inverters. Um, from here, uh, the, the, the wires from the breakers go through the pass-through between these two panels and then are distributed to the inverters. Again, yellow line. Now, this yellow line represents the eight gauge wire supply to the inverter. You have four wires inside, um, of course, ground, neutral, L1, and L2. That's a representation of that, okay? Then you got these green wires. That's an output from the inverters to the home panel, okay? Uh, I use the 10 gauge wire on that. Okay, because the maximum output out of inverters is 22 amps and 10 gauge will be more than sufficient for that. Even if you include the uh, uh, power correction uh, at a certain temperature. But as I said, I will not go into that. You can, you can find out more videos in regards to that. And same for inverter number two and number three. I do have same setup. Yellow represents grid supply, and the green is uh, inverter output, okay? And then, of course, this, this green wire represents a combined inverter output that goes to the main house panel. Again, this here uses a two-gauge wire, and it goes to that main panel. Okay, now we're coming down here on the power wall. Each power wall, each power wall, I mean, you can go look at my videos on the power walls. Each power wall has a output of one odd uh, gauge wire, windy nation, and all of them, red representing positive, blue representing negative. All of them are combined in a power combiner distribution box. They're all combined inside, meaning that the all, all three power walls are wired in parallel, combined inside. I have a video on that too. It's called LV5048 power wall distribution box. And you can see inside of it, nothing has changed uh, I think Michael asked the question saying that a lot of things are changed. Nothing has changed. There's just more stuff added in there that was already I'm, I made I made room for it previously knowing what I'm going to do. So we have a one out wire going into a power combiner distribution box and then from of course from each power wall one out gets combined and then I do have, as you as as you will see in that video if you watch it, uh, all three all three negatives are combined onto the shunt, and then of course all three positives are combined and then split on a DC breaker side. Now I have only used 100 amp DC breakers. I think that's sufficient enough, and I do not want to go more than that. Um, because at 300 amps maximum draw, that is more than 15, 15 kilowatt of power provided. And they trip at 125 amps. That's per, that's per listing of these DC breakers. So, and then of course you have this battery monitor over here. Uh, from there, each inverter has its one art supply. Uh, it has its own uh, battery power supplied by one art windy nation wire. Uh, positive, negative, positive, negative, and then we'll look at it again one more time on a power wall. So you will see exactly how this is represented. I think this is sufficient enough to see what's going on with my system as it is on this wiring diagram. So in the next part let's look at let's look at the system itself and uh, see what I did 
on the wall and you will see how this how, how, how this compares to this wiring diagram now that you have seen the um, now that you have seen the uh, uh, wiring diagram on a piece of paper here it is that's a grid supply panel wire coming in two gauge here it is open has three breakers inside for all three panels okay output from the breakers goes through this pass through and then it goes over here is the output is the input to the panels from the grid side here's the output from the inverter goes back into this box gets combined in here to on the breaker also and then goes back to the house panel okay same thing for inverter number two and then inverter number three and then of course the power combiner distribution box as i said watch the video again and you will see what i mean here's a positive sign here's a negative sign one hot cable same for all three power walls then you get combined inside then through the breakers on the positive side out to the inverters one two and of course number three and these are the outputs right here positive negative positive negative positive negative positive negative positive negative positive negative uh, keep it constant probably moving from left to right it's always the best way and also if you have to go in a circle you go clockwise it makes more sense and it's easier to label and it's easier to know later if you have to do something or if somebody has to come and look at your system and, and whatnot so that's a basic install of this wiring uh, as i said i am not professional electrician i i know enough to be dangerous and make this video on youtube so you know take it for what it's worth and you know as i said uh nec code book is free if you register yourself with the nec over there on their website and then you can browse the NEC code book you know that they already have 2020 edition you can browse it and you can see what rules might apply and what the national electric code wants you to do i try to follow it as best as i can uh in the next video i might do a little presentation about the tools and how important they are and what kind of tools are you using to to, to achieve the best results uh i hope you all enjoy this video and um, you know it's already probably 12 13 14 minutes long but i think it shows enough as to how this is done uh, practice if you don't know what you're doing practice on something before you actually start wiring stuff be careful when you tighten your connections do not over tighten you'll break something especially on the inverters you have to be careful when it comes into that regards and you have to be careful when you're dealing with this much power in these power walls don't burn yourself down don't burn your house down don't you know don't get hurt if you don't know what you're doing ask somebody to help you hire somebody to help you or you know watch some more videos and, and try to make the best decisions as you can for yourself and you know these days a lot of people ask about, you know, your inverters are not UL listed. They are not UL listed. You want a UL listed inverter? Hey, I want to have a UL listed inverter. If I had a choice, I would like to have two Solarks 12 kilowatt each unit. But damn, they're six and a half thousand dollar each. I think this will do just fine. Um, I know. I know government might make the fuss, but this is the decision I made, and this is what I think will work for me the best. Um, anyways, um, this is basically a presentation of what I did on my system. Thanks, guys.